What's good everybody, welcome back to my channel, I'm Zamir from XCC Tunes. In this video, I'm gonna talk about MIDI functions in Cubase. I have made a video before about Cubase MIDI functions and in Cubase 11, so I call it MIDI Explain. And if you guys haven't checked it out yet, I'll leave the link in the description so you guys can check it out. So I explain a lot of things in that video and I won't be repeating the same information in this video, so Please go ahead and check it out. So since Cubase 11, there's a lot of great updates made by Steinberg for Cubase 12 and Cubase 13, which I'm going to be covering in this video. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing is, uh, let me just grab some instrument here. Okay. All right, so let's have massive and I'm going to go to the chord pad and just get some chord here. Right, so I've created a MIDI event right now, and this is the MIDI event. Let's say if I want to export this MIDI as a MIDI file, so then I can use it in another computer or another DAW. I can do it quite easily in Cubase. All you have to do is just go and find a folder that you want to export this to, and just click on this event, drag and drop it in the folder. So when you drag and drop in the folder, it's going to create the MIDI file and then whatever name that you have it here, F minor, is going to be saved here. So if you want to change the name, you can just shift right click and go to rename selected event. And then you can name it as piano progression. And now it's saved as piano progression. Now I'm going to drag it and drop it here. It's going to save as piano progression. So that's really useful. I just wish that they allowed this to happen while we are in the file browser. I mean, just like drag it and drop it there. You know, that would be even awesome. But we can't do that, unfortunately. If I drag and drop, drop it here, you can see that it's not allowing me to do anything. So, so that's that. Okay, so the next thing is, okay, the next thing is, is very important. So let's say if you are in the key editor now and if you want to record a melody on top of this, so you already have F minor chord played here and you want to add a melody in a higher octave. So let's say this is a so this is the the range that you want to play a melody, right? So the one way of doing it is actually just press play. So you when you play that melody, it's gonna create the retrospective recording and if you want that retrospective recording to be pasted here which means you want to enter it in this key editor in this MIDI event you just have to go and click on this button here insert MIDI retrospective recording in editor so when you click on that it's gonna create that part here right so if let's say you go to the project window and then now you press insert it's gonna it's going to insert it in a different MIDI event. So it depends whether you want it to be in the key editor like here or you want to have a separate MIDI event, right? So if let's say you are in the key editor now and you want to record again in the key editor. However, you don't want to use the retrospective recording. You want to just use the record function. What you can do is you can come here and click on this record in editor, right? And then you press the record button, which is the asterisk key. And then. So when you play whatever uh, note there, it's going to be recorded now, right? Just there. If you don't have this enable, right? Let me delete this. And if you want to record now. Now you don't have that MIDI note created within this key editor so then what you're gonna have to do is have to go to project window and then click on this MIDI event and then double click and open it so you have you have it in a different MIDI event so depending whether you want that or you prefer to have it in the same MIDI event all right so that's useful and another cool thing I like in uh, the Cubase 13 version is that for instance let's say I am okay we have this lane here by the way, if you don't see this, you have to go here and click on this and click on these tracks. So if you don't have this track selected, you won't be able to see the track here, right? 
So that's important. So now let's say you want to see this MIDI information here. When I click on this, the chord progression, I only see this MIDI note, the melody that I played. So if we want to see this MIDI information, just double click on it. And now you will see this one. And if you want to see this one, just double click and you can see this one, right? So this is cool. Another important thing that a lot of us like want to do, for instance, is that let's say I have created this melody and but I want to make it longer, maybe two bars, right? Uh, previously, you have to go here to the project window and you have to change to sizing, apply time stretch and then drag it to however the, the length that you want, like so, right? This is okay. But in Cubic City, you can do it even faster. So now you are in Key Editor. You just have to press uh, this one and go to Sizing, Apply, Time Stretch, or you can press Number One. It's gonna change it between Object Selection, Normal Sizing, or Object Selection, Sizing, Applies, Time Stretch. Okay. So now, what you can do is you can do it from this Key Editor, and then you can just changed it like so even faster than before so i like that part because i always wanted to do that and now we can do it in cubase 13 so that's great and if you want to select all of these midi event which is within this lane the, within this track what you can do is press shift and double click and now both of these midi event will be selected okay and now you can see those melodies up here and then the key and the piano chord progression here and you can also double click on them later to just view one of these midi event okay so why this is useful is for instance okay let me just show this with groove agent let me grab a groove agent let me load a kit here let's say this one okay now i'm in the pattern so I got this pattern and I'm going to just drag it and drop it like so. Okay. And when I use Groove Agent, I like to have each of these nodes in a different lane. So what I'll do is I click on this MIDI event, go to MIDI, go to Dissolve Parts. And then I'm going to select Dissolve to Lanes Process. So each of these nodes is actually within its own lane. So when I go to the MIDI event right now, let's say this is the kit. Okay, this is a kick, I believe. Right. And then I can go to the next MIDI note. This one. You know? And if I want to select all of them, just press shift and double click. Now you see all the information here. That's cool. This benefit of using this dissolve to lane is let's say let's say I want to have this rim shot. Let's say I want to I want to have this part play in the second bar. So now let me mute that. Okay, let's let's say if I want to play the whole range now. So I have this part playing at the second beat. So if I have all of these MIDI notes within one MIDI event. So it's kind of hard for me to just edit this part here. So this is why I like to use the dissolve lane function. And now we're in Cubase 13, it's get even easier to edit with this feature of MIDI lane, right? This is fantastic. I like this. So sometimes I'm, I'm kind of confused about what is happening uh, with, with, between these MIDI events. So I don't know whether this one is kick this one is hi-hat or snare, whatever. So what I'll usually do is I just color each of these lane and I can go to this color tool, to click on this. And now when I press control and click, it's gonna give me the color palette here. Now I can color this part. And let me just do for all of these events. Okay, so now each of these MIDI event has its own color. So now when I double click on it, say I'm working on this, right? If I go to this one, I know that this is actually, yeah, it's a hi-hat, right? And this one is the, wait, this one is a what? It's 
the snare. So this is kind of like easier for me. Like I like to have this kind of colorful thingy. It's more fun to look at and I know, for instance, what each of these instruments color is. So I can just by looking at the MIDI note, I know this is a hi-hat. In order for you to be able to see these colors here, you have to make sure that you select this as part. Because if you have it selected as channel, it's going to be all the same color. Or velocity, it's going to be based on the velocity. So no, you have to change it to part to see like colorful like this one. Okay, moving on. And the next part is the key editor. So now you can see that I have Groove Agent here and I have Massive. So I click on this and enable this. Now I can see the chord information and the melody for Massive. And if I uncheck this, it's not going to be here. So basically, I don't even have to go to project window at all. And if I have about 100 over tracks, I can use the find track button. Then I can search for it. And this is not only for MIDI tracks or instrument track. It's also available for sampler track. So let's say I'm going to add this one here. Okay, let's add some MIDI parts here, whatever. So now when I double click on this and open the key editor, the hi-hat is there. So I can see the hi-hat, even though it's not a MIDI or instrument track, but it uses the MIDI events to trigger those sample. So which is why you're able to see this information in key editor. And another cool part you have to also remember is that you can also have the global tracks here. So right now I don't have any global track. Let me just add a video track then video track so now I've got a video track let me drag it up here so let's open the key editor now if I go here and click on this global track I'm able to see this information here or I can go here and click on this button as well so either way right another thing is you can go to this controller lane as well you can click from here to enable or disable the controller lanes or you can come here and click on the plus button and go to show used controller. You can also assign this to a MIDI remote which is kind of useful and yeah so that's that. So that's all i like to share for today. Quick update from the previously MIDI explained video. So if you guys want to know more about MIDI Please check that video and then you come back here. And I'm still learning Cubase 13. So if there's any more information that I discovered, I will definitely share with you guys. All right. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.